everyone wants to play more of the games they like. There is no debate on the topics of should we end the game in zombies after Easter eggs. 9 out of 10. 95 out of 100. 925 out of 1,000 people would want to keep playing zombies after an Easter egg is completed. So why does Treyarch decide to end an Easter egg after you completed an Easter egg? How can that technique be used most effectively and when is it not used correctly? Today, I want to discuss these questions and more on today's episode of the main thing. Do you remember what it was like for a game of zombies to have an ending for the first time? Was it jarring for you like it was for me? Or did you come along later in zombies when this became the norm? Well, let's take a look back at the first time Treyarch ever ended a game of zombies in a fashion different from dying. The critically acclaimed Mob of the Dead was a jarring change from the norm in zombies. New features like afterlife mode, an inventory system, and HUD like never before. And side quests that put old maps to shame rocked the community. This was one of the greatest risks Treyarch took with the zombies meta due to the mode shortcomings with the releases of Transit and Die Rise. Call of Duty Zombies found itself on the chopping block, so the team allowed for a possible new direction for one of the DLCs. Clearly, a lot of planning went into the map to get the voice actors for each of the parts available at the right time. All four mobsters are critically acclaimed actors that you can't just book into the studio on any given day. Dead of the Night is a great lesson in celebrities ruining map release timelines due to their schedules. But I digress. Mob of the Dead was meant to be a stunning test to what zombies could be. Mob wanted to push the boundaries of what is Call of Duty Zombies. It achieved that and more on launch. Mob of the Dead was jam-packed full of easter eggs, gameplay functions, and new weapons that overwhelmed players at launch. Simply not touching your controller when you spawned into the map greeted players with an alternate outro music easter egg just for doing something out of the norm. So much thought went into Mob of the Dead that the decision to end the game must have been debated inside the studio. Different members of the development team have preferences just like the zombies community. There are high round guys, story buffs, and gameplay junkies all trying to help shape each map's release. Getting everyone to agree on the direction to end the game probably didn't even happen inside the studio, but the decision happened and what it accomplished was capturing the imagination of the community. I don't regret a damn thing. If I had my time over, I'd do it all again. Players had a mixed reaction on release, all interpreting things in different ways. People couldn't decide if the game was canon or not, if there were multiple endings like transit maps, how it factored into the storyline, if it meant anything at all. Some were gripped at the prospect that you could kill your teammates at the end of the Easter egg, a short and to the point main Easter egg quest that culminated in a grisly shootout on top of the Golden Gate Bridge. It reeks of nostalgia to me at this point in life, but hasn't been done since. Once the shootout was decided, players were shocked to see a game over screen following the corresponding cycle ending text, depending on your ending. It was a technique used to capitalize on the narrative. It would become obvious in future installments what was driving the decision to end zombie games early, the narrative. Black Ops 4 was a zombies experience of the narrative over gameplay. Every single map ended early after completing the Easter egg besides Classified. Classified was meant to be an Easter egg for high round players in addition to the Ultimus crew we played as was completely unrelated to the actual Easter egg. They're not the Ultimus crew we played in in World at War through Black Ops 1 and even in Alpha Omega. So it didn't matter. Otherwise, every Call of Duty Zombies map in Black Ops 4 was ending with an exclamation point which caused none of the maps to do so. Black Ops 3 used map ending Easter eggs sparingly as it concluded Call of Duty Zombies brackets within the Heather storyline during the ending of Revelations. The end is shown on screen to let you know just how over the game is. Revelations used the same technique of Mob of the Dead in that respect, unlike Black Ops 4. 
With every exclamation point at the end of a zombie's Easter egg comes the law of diminishing returns. The community, having seen a game over by ending the Easter egg three times prior to before Black Ops 4's release, knew what it was like to feel the shock of a game over screen. So it wasn't as effective. By the time players finished the three Easter eggs on launch, impact had faded away. Origins even suffered from its ending the game early a bit because of how close Mob of the Dead's shock was only four months prior. For Black Ops 4, you were talking about hours or days separating the supposed shock of a game over. The norm of zombies changed again in Black Ops 4, just like nearly every installment. The main quest Easter egg decided that the reward for completing the quest was learning more about the narrative instead of giving gameplay buffs. By turning typical Easter egg logic on its head, Treyarch took another risk, hoping it would pay off again like so many times their risks had paid off in the past. They were hoping that their narrative would become so compelling that each map ending would be a cliffhanger the community couldn't wait for next. Instead, it hit players softly, many asking, why'd I spend two to three hours doing that? What'd I get out of that? It's no secret how complex the Call of Duty Zombie storyline can be to the majority of players. Most had no idea what was going on in the past. When players completed Easter eggs in previous maps, it was a much easier concept to grasp why you would do an Easter egg. You get a Wonder Waffa drop. You get some perma perks. You can get a super Easter egg with pack-a-punch guns everywhere. Black Ops 4, that incentive toward gameplay was removed even when it got some of it right. Initially, if you completed any base maps Easter egg, the next game you played on whatever map you chose, minus Alpha Omega, gave you free doors. It was not an immediate gratification after completing an Easter egg, but it was something to get players to complete an Easter egg over and over again to have free shopping freeze in a sense for the next map they loaded up. Then Treyarch decided to patch that out to everyone's disappointment. The Easter egg reward wasn't a feature, but a bug to Treyarch. The switch from gameplay rewards to narrative ones is what I believe hurt the delivery and the enjoyment of the game over screens. The game over screens de-incentivized players to run Easter eggs unless they had nothing better to do in a Black Ops 4 match. Why bother if you aren't ready to end the game? So what are some suggestions for how Black Ops 4 zombies could have handled game overs? Maps like Tag Der Untold and Ancient Evil could be left untouched because they are the season finale maps in Call of Duty Zombies. So let's focus on the tools Treyarch has used and can use to keep players playing after the main quest and some of the other maps. Giving players permanent perks became a given after a while and was boring to some by the end of Black Ops 3. One way to encourage players to play more is by unlocking new areas to play. Zitsubo no Shima rewarded players with a training room or camping hallway after completing their easter egg. Allowing players to fight in 9, Blood of the Dead, or Dead of the Night's boss arenas would be a fun way to keep the game going after the easter egg conclusion. There's plenty of areas they could sneak back through into the main map to continue the game. If for some reason, contrary to previous maps, you have an issue with continuing in a map because it's not canon anymore, then Treyarch could model swap the characters as we play. We saw this achieved with Richthofen at the end of Blood of the Dead's Easter Egg. In 9, we could become the explorers trapped in the trial from the 9 radios. Blood of the Dead, we could have the souls of the Mob of the Dead crew take form as the pocket dimension collapses. And inside Dead of the Night, we could play as the Order. Each would offer opportunities to learn more about these new characters or give a different feel to the map if they don't want to spend money on voice lines or even recycle voice lines. I love it when I go to Area 51 after the moon easter egg. The skybox and the color palette change make me feel like my actions impacted the world. I feel a new aesthetic to the game. All that could be applied to the new areas, the new costumes, and the new color palette after completing an easter egg. Even swapping textures could be effective. Blood of the Dead could have that color palette swap 
throw in the mobsters and reskin the zombies as skeletons as we had in the Dreisendrocky Strag. We could try and explain it as this is how they get put to rest after all the souls fly away and blood of the dead. If it's even necessary, if canon even matters, it's available any way you want to swing it to allow players to continue to follow the fun. I stress that because we have played on maps like Shangri-La where we should have left right after the Easter egg. Instead, we enjoyed the fruits of our labors with permanent perks, depending on how many times we repeated the Easter egg. There are not four focusing stones in the canon, but every player could get them. Endings of main quests should have a punch to make players want to do them. I believe that after doing an Easter egg, let the players gain access to almost every tool on the map, if not all of them. It gives players the chance to try things they normally wouldn't without having the normal repercussions. They might find new ways to play, thus making the game more replayable. I know everyone's always chasing that magic word, but it's just a suggestion. I know after Ascension, Moon, and Dreisendrock, I learned so much more about the maps because I had that extra time to explore after the main quest. To recap what I've stated so far, is give players costume swaps, gameplay buffs like perma perks or other percentage rewards relative to Gorod Krovi's masks. Open new areas to play, even if it's just one or two places. Swap out those color palettes and textures to make us feel like we're impacting the world around us. Give players access to all they can so they can learn how they love to play this game. Give limited time rewards like opening the doors in the next playthrough. And then you can even give them the choice to end the game like in Origins. Origins might have done it best. And here's how. Origins forces players to unlock all the staffs through the Easter egg. You gather elemental fists along with strike grenades on your journey. The quest made you experience nearly every aspect that the map had to offer for the most part. Once you complete the Easter egg, you don't have to press square to end the game. Instead, Origins gives you a whole new area to train in without the 115 walls crashing down. Origins plays differently now thanks to this. You could train in the crazy place like normal, but you had to make a trade-off originally. You couldn't use the staffs if you wanted to train down there. With the Easter egg complete, you get rewarded. You can now train in the crazy place and cycle through all four of the staffs in one of the best training spots in the entire map outside the bunker. Origins encourage players to enjoy all the fruits of their labors after completing all the grunt work of the quest. Now, how tedious quests are to get these rewards, again, that's a different video I already made. I don't want to get into that. We're talking about how after it's complete, once you have this chance to not end the game, it gives players the ability to maybe explore the map for the golden shovel, the golden helmet, and find those perk bottle mounds, since you have more options after the game ends. To go further, World War II zombies would have benefited from giving free pack-a-punch because so many weapons had different effects. Most zombies players didn't bother trying anything else once they found an optimal couple weapons for their loadout. After completing an Easter egg, players will have a great time experimenting with all the features the developers worked so hard to put in game and they allow them to have free access to pack-a-punch, multiple pack-a-punch, or even unlock a new upgrade system after the game is over. After you complete an Easter egg, encouraging High Rounders to experience the Easter eggs that so little actually end up completing. Black Ops 4 came short on that because the reward was the narrative, and that could easily be found online with a quick Google search. So why bother doing the Easter egg? We have talked about how a focus on narrative can make a game over in Zombies ineffective. We have discussed some suggestions for further expanding what we can do after the game ends, and how we could approach maps differently depending on players' care for canon in the most recent installment for Black Ops 4. Even Alpha Omega breaks its own canon when the crew goes above ground to chill in a garage after a nuke was dropped about five minutes early in the ending cutscene. So canon is a very weak argument to stop the game early. Zombie needs to return to allowing players to continue playing after an Easter egg while rewarding them properly for their success. I'm curious to hear your suggestions in the comments on what else developers could add after an Easter egg. Keep in mind, development is all about the allocation of resources. It doesn't make sense to make another quest after they finish the main quest or to introduce more bosses. Try to keep those restrictions in mind when giving your suggestions. Thanks for watching this week's episode of The Mainframe. 
We post a new episode every Friday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Make sure you are subscribed and have notifications on so you don't miss a video or join my Discord community. I had a viewer let me know that the notifications didn't tell them my video was uploaded for last week's mainframe episode. I always update my Discord, so please join that community over there. Also, my Resident Evil 2 posters are still on sale. The posters are booming. We have Wave 1 shipped out and Wave 2 is on its way. Place your pre-orders now to get them while you can. Once they are gone, they are likely never to come back. I would also like to plug my upcoming Resident Evil 3 review. You can see my first playthrough on, I streamed on this very channel in the description. I'll be putting together a way too in-depth review discussing the game because I really want to make a long video going way too deep into a topic other than zombies because I found I really enjoyed this installment. Thank you to all my patrons who make these videos possible. Please consider supporting the Patreon page. It directly helps me hire my editors and keep them happy. Thanks for watching and be safe until I see you on the next episode of The Main.